Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have 1 to the power x equals e and we're going to be solving for x values. Now this problem, looking at it from a real perspective, doesn't make much sense because 1 to the power any number is 1, so from here we just get e equals 1. Obviously e is Euler's number and it's about 2.7, right? and e cannot be 1. So this is false. And since we're looking for x values, obviously we don't want x values to disappear, right? So how do we solve it then? We have to look at it from a complex numbers perspective. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and complexify 1 and e and then go from there. All right, great. So let's go ahead and do it. So how do you express 1 as a complex number. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha. Or any results? No. Wolfram Alpha cannot solve this problem. Unfortunately, I haven't tried writing complex solutions, but for this one, at least, it's just false. Too bad. Okay, so we have 1 to the power x equals e. So we want to express 1 as a complex number. To be able to do that, we're going to consider the complex plane, which is also called the Argand plane, I think. Right? This is the real part, this is the imaginary part, and then we have 1, which is 1 plus 0i, which also corresponds to the point 1, 0. So that would be something like this. Let's see, we can probably mark it one unit away from 0. And of course, when you connect to the, connect it to the origin, you're going to realize that its modulus, absolute value, or r, is also 1. So we need to know two things to be able to write a number as a complex number in the most compact form using Euler's formula. A number z can be written as r e to the power i theta. Theta is the angle and in this case you can see that it's zero degrees or radians but we want to consider all rotations. There is going to be infinitely many values, multi-valued. So we're going to consider multiples of 2 pi which corresponds to zero pretty much, right? So 1 can be written as r, which is 1, e to the power i times 2 pi, and then we want to consider multiples of 2 pi, so we're going to multiply that by n, but we could also write it as e to the power 2 pi n i, putting the i at the very end, okay? Now, this is how 1 is expressed. How about e? e is just e, isn't it? Well, here's the thing. You can write e as e to the power 1, but also there are infinitely many values that you can use. So we can go ahead and write the e as e times 1, which is again e to the power 2 pi ni. But you don't want to use the same integer value. Let's go ahead and use 2 pi ki this time. Okay? And this is going to give us e to the power 1 plus 2 pi ki. k and n are integers, by the way. If I forgot to say, those are going to be integers, positive and negative. Make sense? So we complexified both sides. Let's go ahead and plug these into our equation, which is 1 to the power x equals e, which does not seem to have a solution in the real world, right? All right, great. So let's go ahead and replace 1 with e to the power 2 pi and i, and then I'm going to go ahead and raise it to the power x. This is where the uh, variable x comes in. And then we're going to set it equal to e, which is e to the power 1 plus 2 pi ki. Okay? So notice that we're not raising both sides to the power x. We're just substituting. We had 1 to the x equals e, and we replace 1 with that. Make sense? Okay. Now here's our equation. Let's go ahead and multiply the exponents, e to the power 2 pi n i x, however you want to write, you could also write it as 2 pi n x i or 2 pi x n i, whatever, doesn't matter, no big deal. But that's equal to 1 plus e to the power 1 plus 2 pi k i. Now, there might be a problem with picking a generic n in this case because normally x is a variable, so it should give us all possible solutions, but we're going to go ahead and explore different possibilities here, okay? So now, because some people claim that n is not needed on the left-hand side, and sometimes people say, okay, you don't get all the solutions, but some solutions are not satisfied. Anyways, we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, so from here we get 2 pi ni x equals 1 plus 2 pi 
ki. Since the bases are the same, we can do the natural log. We already added the 2 pi k on one side, so we're good in terms of um, all the multiple values. Make sense? So, since we're solving for x, it would make sense if you divided everything by x. Let's go ahead and, I mean, everything by coefficient of x, which is 2 pi and i, right? They're all constants. So it's going to be 1 over 2 pi and i plus 2 pi ki divided by 2 pi and i. Interesting. Now on the right hand side, we do get a lot of simplifications because 2 pi is going to cancel out, i is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with something weird. x equals, now here, you definitely want to put the i in the numerator, so let's multiply by negative i. Some people will multiply by i and then have, they'll have to negate it, but I directly multiply by negative i. That gives me negative i divided by, now i times negative i is negative i squared, which is positive 1. So it's going to give me 2 pi n at the bottom, which is nice. And if I did multiply by i, I would get a negative 2 pi n. Of course, I would then multiply by negative 1. That's just more work. Plus, this is the interesting part, k over n. k and n are integers. Obviously, n should not be 0. And what happens if n is equal to 0 in the first place, right? Remember, we express 1 as e to the power 2 pi n i. So if n is equal to 0, you get 1 equals 1. So you're not really complexifying it, right, in that sense. So that's why you want to avoid n equals 0. Great. Now, where do we go from here? We probably want to write in standard form k over n. And then minus, because there's a minus sign, 1 over 2 pi n multiplied by i. So we can kind of look at it from an a plus b i perspective. Well, well, that's the name of the other channel. But anyways, that's a different story. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't checked it out yet. But anyways, we can just, we kind of wrote it in standard form, right? But there's a lot of variables. Um, there are kind of constants, but they're integers. So we can replace k and n with pretty much anything we want except for 0 for n. So what happens if k and n are both 1? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that particular case. If k and n are both 1, then we get something super duper simple. x equals 1 minus 1 over 2 pi times i. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this in because we kind of want to make sure that at least one of the solutions work. 1 to the x equals e. Is that satisfied by the solution? Let's go ahead and do it. 1 to the power 1 minus 1 over 2 pi i. And that's supposed to equal 1 over 1 to the power 1 over 2 pi i. I kind of put that negative exponent in denominator. So what is 1 over 2 pi i? Well, well, we can go ahead and write the 1 as e to the power 2 pi i. And then multiply by i over 2 pi. 2 pi is going to cancel out. i times i is i squared. 1 over e to the power negative 1, and that's going to be e. So it's satisfied at least for these particular values. But is that going to work in general? That's a good question. If you try other values, for example, here's, here's what the problem is going to be. If you replace x um, with that, so you're going to get 1 over 1 to the power k over n uh, divided by, well, let's go ahead and write it this way, 1 to the power negative i over 2 pi n. This part is going to be 1, as long as n does not equal 0, right? Because any power of 1. But here's the problem. Whenever you write something like 1 to the power 2 thirds, this is a little problematic because it has multiple values in the complex word. But guess what? One of them is going to be 1 all the time, so we can take it as our principal value. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.